What's going on guys, this is Lord Conobro with a Ruby Amethyst deck tech. This is the deck that I piloted into a first place finish at the Lorcana Championships at the Hunter Burton Memorial Open in Dallas. I ultimately chose this deck because it is very consistent and over a long day of tournaments with 6 rounds of Swiss and 3 rounds of top 8, having a consistent game plan that you can execute is really important to reducing variance. Also, the deck doesn't really have any bad matchups so there's nothing that you're really hoping to avoid, which is I think it's also important going into a tournament. Going into the event, I expected to see a lot of Ruby Sapphire Dime, a lot of Sapphire Steel, a good amount of the Mirror, and various aggro strategies, so I've kind of constructed the deck in a way that can address all of those things. The ideal game plan for the deck is to curve out on turns 1 through 4, which gives you the flexibility to either stay on top of your opponent if they're playing an aggro strategy, or it gives you the ability to generate an early lore advantage if your opponents are having a slow start. From there, you're looking to either control the game with your removal and card draw options, or to just close out the game with your lore generation tools like Goat Bounce, the Queen's Castle, or the Sorceress Spellbook. Some of the flex slots that I've included are the Cusco Wanton Llama. I think this card is very important to ensure that you hit your early curve turns. I've also included Pinocchio, Talkative Puppet and Teeth and Ambitions. Both of these are tools to combat the aggro strategies, which is I did play Amber Steel in the finals, and these cards were very important in that matchup. And we're also playing two copies of Dragonfire, which gives you more removal to control that mid-game state. So this deck operated really nicely for me, but um, after the event, some of the changes that I'm thinking about making are going to look something like this. The major updates that I've made to this deck is that I've swapped the Dragonfires for the Lady Tremaines. I think they kind of both fill the same role, but you are able to sh bounce or even shift bounce Lady Tremaine, which gives you the recursion option, which I think is a little bit more powerful than the spot removal that Dragonfire offers. But because of that, we're running more inkables, so I removed Pinocchio Talkative Puppet, and added four teeth and ambitions, so we still have some game against the aggressive decks. So this is actually the version, I've got a 1k coming up this weekend, and I'm planning to play this version this weekend. So with that said, let's jump into some gameplay. Alright, looks like we're on the draw. With a pretty nice hand, we do have a curve of one two, three, and four. So I think we're just going to put one of these rabbits back and keep everything else. All right, so our opponent plays popsicle. They're either gonna be blue steel or blue red. Um, our game plan against either one of those decks is really to just curve out and put as much pressure on them before they either whole new world us if they're steel or set up a lucky dime if they're red. Okay, so they are steel. Captain Hook's really good at shutting down this mini mouse. I think I'm still going to quest though because if they attack we can take it out with their our Cusco or they will have to sacrifice a popsicle. And they actually chose to just let it untap. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to play a Sorceress, draw a card, and once again quest with both. If they want to use their Captain Hook to trade, we can trade back with our next turn. These cards have also just gained lore for us already. Okay, so they're playing Flavisham here. Uh, this means they don't have the ability to sing a whole new world with one of their characters next turn. 
which means we're going to have more time with this hand. You know, at least two more turns with this hand. So we're still going to try and get more characters out. Definitely going to have our Cusco attack the Captain Hook. I don't want to sing friends just yet. We have so much card draw in our hand already. We really just want to get on board. Like they're gonna go straight in for a Tomatoa here, which is pretty rough for us. We don't really have anything that can deal with that right now. And there's the Tomatoa. We are gonna see the friends on the other side now. We really want to find a Maui. We don't find a Maui, but we do find a Be Prepared. But we're pretty far away from that. So I think we're just going to play a goat in Kakuzco and quest out here. So the Tomato and Flavish and Loop is very powerful. Obviously, they sacrifice the Popsicle to their Flavisham, drawing more cards. And then they recur it back with the Tomatoa. So we really have to answer this board state. They got the Quad Popsicle. Go ahead and draw a card. It's another beat. We are able to remove the Flavisham this turn if we go attack, attack, but we can also remove it with Madame Medusa. But I think I would prefer to save that for later and just attack here. As third B prep is really not good, especially if they hold the world us. Play a rabbit, draw some more cards, and we'll ink a teeth and pass the turn, and hopefully they don't whole new world us. going to play along came Zeus to remove our rabbit which means most likely they're gonna hold new world us we're gonna draw a card and then we'll see if they hold new world okay no whole new world that's good for us Perfect. So I think we're going to bounce the friends. We have so much card draw already with rabbit and bounce. I think I'd rather keep all of the other cards in our hand. And we have three be prepared. So we're really hoping that they just dump their hand again. We can be prepared them again and just do that two more times. Another Tomato is pretty scary. 
Okay, now play Avenger. Looks like they're really getting to, into whole new world territory. So we will be prepared again. At this point, I think we can ink the Maui's fish hook and pass the turn. They're probably gonna whole new world us with only two cards left. That's really all we can do with our hand. And there's the whole new world. It's going to be pretty tough for us to come back from. They just had a very fast and aggressive start. I think we have to start by drawing a card. The ink of teeth. Drop our location and drop our mini mouse. And this really sets up for our, our crab to hopefully be able to attack into something. And with three B prepared in our yard, our opponent knows they can just kind of play everything. They don't have to worry about it too much. So we're in a really tough spot. So it doesn't look like there's anything we can do to stop them from winning the game next turn. Unless we draw B prepared, so we're going to go for that. We could sing the friends on the other side with the rabbit to draw two cards, but if we miss, we absolutely have to find a be prepared so i think we're actually going to sing friends on the other side and we did miss so now we can run our rabbit into their mr smee for one more look part of the cards okay that doesn't help and now even if we find it it's okay we didn't find it anyway so we'll go ahead and go to the next game All right, up against Blue Steel on the play this time. Uh, once again, our hand's really good, so we're just gonna keep this and see how it curves out. Having the B prepared in our opening hand is really rough because they're very likely gonna just wheel us. Minnie Mouse, play Cusco, and just start luring. Another B prayer prepared. That's super rough. Our B prepared are just uh, very eager to come out in both games. We'll see if they have the fishbone quill on turn three here. All right, no fishbone quill, which means their start is not gonna be as explosive We'll go ahead and trade with Smee here and draw a card. And we'll play our rabbit.
Hogsworth is kind of annoying. We're not actually able to attack and vanish this mini Mickey Mouse now. So I think we're just going to quest up. I'm assuming they're going to sing Whole New World here, so I'm just gonna put as many things down on the board as I can. If they don't sing Whole New World, we have a lot of options next turn with Tremaine in to be prepared. Yep, there's a Whole New World. Hitting two be prepared is very brutal. But we do hit Maui, which is big game. Maui is going to be really important for us here to just be able to attack his Cogsworth. So now this only has resist one, so we can attack it with two characters. And we'll go ahead. We could play the Minnie Mouse. I think it's better served as ink here. They go Tinkerbell and to grab your swords. That's pretty powerful. All right, no grab your swords. That's nice. Okay, another Maui. So we have a, a bunch of options. We have a Tremaine, but they will only sack the Captain Hook. We do that. I think it's actually better to play the Queen's Castle and the Spell Book. And if they attack into it, we can attack with our backup Maui to manage their board state. Or, actually, instead of getting the Spell Book down, I like getting this uh, Maleficent back and just kind of increasing our board presence. All right, that's really that's really rough for us. That kind of undoes our whole plan. Right, there's a whole new world. We found our, our third be prepared. So even if they grab our grab our swords here, we can just be prepared. And that's actually a very good play into the be prepared. We don't really have anything to deal with that immediately. I think we'll go ahead and put some damage on it and just play out the be prepared. I don't think goat is going to be super important in this matchup, so I'm actually going to eat this. I'm also going to play the mini mouse. This allows us to attack and bounce it back with our fox to finish off the manor, or we can just still play our monstrous dragon. So we have some options. If they do that, I just want to play the Monstrous Dragon here. So we're going to ink the Kuzco and shoot the Tinkerbell. And just pass the turn. Basically, I want to take them off singers so that you can't sing Whole New World. Or if they're going to play it, they'll have to cast it.
Okay. So we have some options here. I think we're gonna have I actually think we're going to have this attack our Mr. Smee. Return it back to our hand. Then we'll pump the fox to be able to destroy the manor. And then we'll play our own. This really puts a lot of pressure on them to sing a whole new world, but if they're singing a whole new world with Tinkerbell, they're not doing anything to our board. And it looks like that's what's happening. If they don't whole new world, we still have the dragon. Okay, so they just don't have whole new world. So now they're in a really tough spot. Uh, we just get to play dragon, shoot the Tinkerbell. And just quest with both of these and move the dragon over to the castle. All right, we're able to take down game two. All right, no be prepared in the opening hand, please. All right, so we have a curve into one, two, three. Um, so we'll keep that curve and toss back everything else. Spellbook's kind of the dead card in this matchup, it's just too slow, generally. But we'll see if we'll have time to get it out. Okay, a lot of uninkables being drawn here. We're going to ink friends. And bounce the Rafiki, and now we at least have another inkable for next turn. Okay. So we could bounce our snake or the fox, but that still only gives us one character on board. I think we're just going to take this turn to play the spell book and quest. And either save that fox for ink because our hand's kind of light on ink, or we have the ability to bounce something more valuable later on. So we'll go ahead and quest here. Ink the goat. Play a rabbit. I'm assuming they're going to hold New World here, but we'll see if they have it. They do. Hopefully, we can find Maui in this new hand. We cannot. But as long as they don't play another Cogsworth, we can have our Madam Moon Snake and our Rabbit attack into the Cogsworth and, and take it out. Oh, they do play another Cogsworth. So now we need a Maui. And we'll, we'll sing friends to try and find a Maui. Well, that does it too. So this will be three damage and this will be two damage, so that will be five. So for that reason, we can still sing friends. No, we did not fight. And now we... Return the snake back to our hand to clear the damage off of it. Oh, 
then we'll return the probably just the fox back to our hand to clear that damage off of it and play around a potential Tinkerbell. Gastonks is pretty good. Our hand has a lot of bounce in it and not a lot of much else. So here I think we're actually going to probably just play Medusa to get on board a little bit harder. We can ink one of these dragons, we're likely not getting to them. We always have the option to bounce this Medusa in the future. And we could quest here, which gives them some good attacks. I think I am going to quest because if they're attacking with the Air Gaston, that means they're not questing for three. And that's worth it to me. All right, Benja, getting rid of our spell book. Binja. It looks like they're going to sing Whole New World here. Maybe try and snipe a Bee Prepared. We don't have a Bee Prepared, so it will be alright for us if they Whole New World. No, they don't Whole New World. Oh, we find a Bee Prepared anyways, so that's great. We're going to just go ahead and quest. We have so many redundant cards. Like, I want to ink this Kuzco, but maybe I'm just supposed to ink one of these redundant cards. All right. We'll see their follow-up here. That's pretty good follow-up. We just have so many cards in our hand, I don't know if I want friends. I think I'd rather just ink it. Oh yeah. Definitely just ink it. And they're probably gonna hold new world. We have so many cards in our hand. Okay, they don't whole new world, so we're gonna get this dragon down while we have the chance. And we'll just go ahead and shoot beast. That's annoying because we have so many ways to bounce it back. Um, but we can just use our crab to trade into the Flavisham here. And we can still put a lot of pressure on them. Well, so much for the crab. Well, we can still use the crab to trade. Or we can shoot the Hades. We can't do both. So this is six. So I think we're actually gonna take out the Flavisham this turn because it draws them two cards. And we can just also play Rabbit, so develop a little bit wider. Uh, Maui would have been really nice. At this point, I think we can get rid of this Kuzco and pass. We're still just really hoping they don't whole new world us. 
Um, we're also hoping that they don't tomatoa us. Tomatoa us. We don't have an answer to that right now. Okay, so I think we're going to let them keep the manor for one turn and just go ahead and take out both their characters. You can put two damage on the manor. This point. I really don't want to ink any of these. I think we just have to ink a snake for flexibility of our options. All right, Mr. Smee, not, not that bad. Lucky Dime, that's pretty good. So now they're threatening to close out the game very quickly here. Um, so what we're gonna do have Medusa attack. Return that back. Take out the Smee. Finish off the manor here. And we can go ahead and play this. At this point, I think we're safe to ink this crab. Well, we can just ink the mini. I, I want to play the mini for more lore power, but I think it's better to just ink it, move Medusa to the location and quest. This Lucky Dime is putting a ton of pressure on us. If they play something like Tamatoa, they get to immediately just quest for three. Okay, Rise of the Titan is a good answer. Gaston also lets them lure for three, and we have no immediate answer to it. So next turn they can lure for six. They'll go to 19. So we basically have to try and win over the next two turns. I'm not sure we're gonna be able to unless we draw some goats. I don't think I wanna be prepared. I think we're gonna start by drawing cards. Teeth doesn't do anything. So we can only quest or four. So I think we do have to be prepared now. Just to stop them from questing for six. But that is really not great for us either. Yep, and they got us. Unless we can draw a Tremaine or a Monstrous Dragon here, they're gonna win. That Lucky Dime was just a little too much for us to overcome. And that actually plays around our Tremaine as well. Yep, so they got us. All right, we're in our next match against Ryan DG, and we're on the draw. So we do have a nice one, two, three here. So we'll probably just keep all of our one, twos, and threes for more option. I like the bounce for, you know, some surprise aggro. I like the card draw, and I like the crab too. It also gives us some inkable options. Against aggro, goat's not gonna matter too much. Just go ahead and get our Rafiki down. Befuddle here would be kind of tough. Q 
Pete is not bad as well. It also takes us off of doing anything next turn, so I think we actually just uh, return it back to our hand and try and set up for a double attack next turn. Bufada would be super rough here as well. Playing the Prince also would stop us from being able to double attack this turn, but that's not what they have. So we are going to be able to successfully double attack here. This is definitely going to be important to you slowing down their war game. Now they only have, they have three cards left, so we just really got to minimize their lore gain here as much as we can and try to realize all of our cards before they do. Okay, that's very good. But that is a free kill, so they're not going to exert it, and they're just going to let us trade into their sneak. And that's okay. Uh, we have to, pretty much have to take that trade. And we'll set up with Mullins. And Rafiki. And we'll hold back this crab to be able to surprise attack the prince. And also hopefully tag something else like the Chernabog's followers. They're getting up to a very high lore count, which is always scary. All right, that's pretty good here. Because now we can go ahead, pump the Rafiki. And definitely just sink teeth on something. to hit that Pascal. Now we'll go ahead and return the crab back to our hand. Hercules into Robin Hood isn't that bad. But they're going to, okay, so they don't quest here. So they'll go to 14, 15, 16. They're sitting at a virtual 16. Which is, is pretty high. I would love to get this castle down, but I think we have to continue to develop our board first. Uh, next turn we can be prepared. That may have been a reason to just play the castle there. No, they're just not going to play anything else. Um, so we can just get the full kills here. trade and this way our rabbit survives and now we can go ahead and play the castle and sit up either sit on this be prepared or start drawing cards 
when I, when I move these characters in. Um, that's an amazing draw for us. It's probably game, to be honest. That's really scary. We need to find something to stop that because if they go, okay, we did find something to stop it. If they had gone to 19, they could rip a goat or a spell book to just win the game from there. And we'll also just send, um, I'm probably going to want to bounce one of these next turn. So I think I'm going to send the crab in. And there would have been the spell book if we did not banish the Pinocchio right there. That is insane. Um, here, this Maui is not going to be relevant. I mean, nothing matters at this point. Just take the deuce back, move everything in, and pass and turn. All right, we're able to pick up game one on the draw. All right, game two against Ryan. Now we know again we're up against Hyper Aggro, so we do want that super fast start. We have the one, two, three, four option. We don't have teeth and ambitions, would be, which would also be really nice. So I think I'm going to put the friends back and the goat back to try and find some, some teeth. No teeth, but we still have a really nice curve. Pascal, that's a scary one for sure. Ooh, that's nasty. It's a lot of lore generation. Okay, fish hook will be nice, but we can't really get that online until turn four or five because it you can realistically we can play it on turn three activate it on turn four and start attacking it's pretty slow I think we actually have to ink the Maui so that next turn we also have the option to play Rafiki and bounce it if that's what we want to do. But they're they're off to a really fast and aggressive start. It's going to be tough for us for sure. Oh, Benja is brutal. If you're gonna choose not to cash in the Pinocchio, which is okay for us, like if we can try and get to these Tremains or the Be Prepared. So I'm just gonna quest here. Spellbook spells spellbook spells disaster for us. And they know it, so they're just gonna, you know, YOLO out here. And rightfully so. We 
just gotta draw some more cards. Oh, uh, too many be prepared. Is there ever such thing as too many be prepared? Yeah, we'll, we'll finish this game out, but I don't think there's any way we could come back. We can only hit the Pascal here, or... Yeah, they're going to sacrifice one Pascal, most likely. No, they will sack the goat. And then they go 17, 18, 19. We still have no answer to the Pascals. Teeth... Teeth and um, fish hook are really our only answers. We do have four teeth in deck. Okay, so now, well, they have spellbook to twenty anyway, so nothing. Yeah, unfortunately, nothing matters. We could clear their board here by playing Lady Tremaine. They're going to sacrifice one thing. Then we'd sing tea. And then we'd be able to attack this other one, but unfortunately just uh, a little too late. So we'll, we'll see if we can get the next one on the play this time. All right, got a lot of one drops and teeth. Um, so I think we're just gonna keep these and see what we draw. We really want some more twos and threes. All right, there's that's a really nice three. So we'll go ahead and ink. And pass the turn here. Depending on what they play, we might not teeth on turn two. Yeah, I think we're actually going to wait. And see if they play like Pinocchio or something so we can just blow them out. Ink Befuddle, that's scary. Okay, so they have another Befuddle. So we have options, we can play uh, Minnie Mouse into Teeth. But I think I'm just going to play the sorceress here. And that way I have an attacker. That's pretty rough for us. So we can't sing teeth. We definitely have to sing teeth this turn. We can't clear the Hercules because we don't have crab, but next turn we do have Maui. So we're going to do a bit of a fancy play here. Play Cusco. We'll sing the teeth to clear that Maleficent. Then we can ink this Cusco we drew. And 
And next turn, we'll be able to Maui attack and then hopefully maybe attack something else as well. They do have a lot of cards in their hand, but hopefully going Maui into Tremaine will be enough for us to disrupt their game plan. Okay, Tian is pretty strong, but we do have the Maui answer. So we'll go ahead and attack. And we'll quest. And now between Tremaine and Madame Medusa, I think we might be okay. It's gonna be close. So here, I do like keeping the bouncer for these. We just have to take the lore off, so we're going to uh, use the Madame Medusa on the Pinocchio. And we'll quest. I'm probably drawing a card here. Rabbit's pretty nice. Okay, the be prepared is pretty nice. I think we can wait a turn on it just to get our castle down. I mean, we also don't necessarily need to do it. I think what I'm actually going to do is play the castle. And just move everything to it to start drawing cards. And this gives me the option to be prepared or just attack and make them sacrifice. But this drawing these cards, I feel, is going to be important. Spellbook's pretty scary here. Um, we are going to be able to be prepared here. That is if we want to. So we could go, yeah, I, we have a better line here, which is attack. Play the Medusa, shoots me. Now, the question is, I can attack Maui into the Pascal and then not draw an extra card, or I can attack Snake in and draw an extra card but lose a lore. Um, at this point, I think I have the cards I need, so I'm just going to prioritize gaining But that could be a mistake. Let's 
So I'm just going to make them sacrifice a character to slow down their lore gain. Then we'll go to... We just have to make sure that we're able to win next turn. So we're th threatening plus seven. So they will have to do something to the man. So I could also play the Maleficent. Ink and Goat seems wrong, but I mean, this is also essentially one lore next turn. So I think it's the same and it also allows us to draw another card here. So now we're threatening plus eight. So they have to answer two things, and they're not able to, so we're able to take down that match, uh, losing the die roll. Alright, we're up against Ryan DG again. We actually have just played this person. I think they were on aggro. So here, I, I'm going to assume I don't know what they're on, and we're just going to keep the two and three. Maybe this isn't who we played against before. I have no two drops, so we can ink. I mean, no one drop to play the snake, so we can just ink this. Okay, it's not. It's a mirror match. Or, no, they are. It is an aggro deck, just not the aggro deck we thought. Red, purple, aggro. Oh, it is the same guy. So we could teeth. We lose our character though. So I think at this point we just want to play the fish hook and ink the location. We're just too far off from it. And hope they don't Benja me. Shift Robin Hood is pretty strong. But as long as they're not questing with these two, it's, uh, I'm okay with it. So we'll just keep drawing cards. Maui's really great. We could, oh no, I was supposed to ink that. Instead it played it for me, which is super pro problematic here. Um, so now that completely changes what we have to do. Oh, it's so rough. We'll hit the Merlin. Now we have to ink one of these Mauis, which feels very bad. But we'll draw a card and we'll go ahead and attack Maleficent. And next turn, we still have Maui available to us with Fishhook to give evasive. So hopefully we'll be able to clear everything next turn, but that was not what we were trying to do. Okay, we're gonna play the Maui first before we ink, just so there's no um, mishaps. Go 
go ahead and give this guy evasive and take out Pascal. So even after some, some misclicks, we're potentially in a good spot, depending on what their follow-up is. It looks like, it looks like. I think we just go ahead and be prepared here since we have two of them. As long as they don't play a location or a spell book, then the deep, this be prepared line will be good for us because we can go again right here. Yep. So this is really nice. I'm not going to ink anything because I think the teeth might be valuable and the Tremaine. Uh, I think the teeth might be valuable, so I'm just not going to ink here. Benja tagging the fish hook. Pretty nice for them. Well, we're just going to make them sacrifice that character. And we don't need to do anything else here. All of these cards are valuable at this stage in the game. Robin Hood. So we can sing friends and they can't trade. We were really hoping for a bounce there. I think we're just going to start drawing cards though. Okay, we did find a bounce. I think we're gonna protect this Tremaine. And now I think we'll ink this teeth just because we have our third and fourth be prepared in our hand and we wanna get to this dragon. We have so much removal. Here we just get to be prepared Just an embarrassment of riches over here, as long as they, like I said, don't draw Spellbook or Location, uh, we'll be in a good spot. Okay, so now we can start getting our rabbit going. Honestly, Crab is fine to just play out here. All of these are fine to play out here at this point, because we have double removal and we just want to start gaining lore. There's the spell book, so we are racing against that clock. Draw a card. Here, I think we're actually just gonna play this out just so we can get some more war game. It might make them think, if they have a be prepared here, that would be really rough for us. Oh, they're only at five, so be prepared is really not on the table. going to hit Mr. Sneed and continue that war pressure. So we can only go plus eight. Oh, there it is. I was about to say, since we can only go plus eight, we'll attack into the Hercules and just manage the board to stop them from potentially cheesing us next turn, but we just drew the win. All right, so we get game one on the play. Uh, moving on to game two. Since they are the aggressor, we really don't want Spellbook. We do want Medusa, but later on in the game. So we have a one, two, three right now. I'll probably keep go either for ink or just to play on four, just to keep some pressure on the board. But this hand has some nice tools. So here we're gonna ink the goat. Well, I think actually we're gonna ink 
Rafiki. Save that goat potentially. So here, if they play something like Pinocchio, we can teeth and then attack the Maleficent. That'd be really nice. They might befuddle us. Okay, Kita. So here we will. Pitch the goat. And we're just going to take out that Maleficent and go around that Kita since we can't banish it just yet and stop their lore game. Okay, Befuddle is actually not that bad for us because I'll probably just ink that to play my Malef Maleficent here. Alternatively, I can double spell Cusco and Mini to turn on Teeth. But I could also turn on Teeth next, I could just play those next turn and have the Maleficent play to potentially sync friends, so I think that's more valuable. Right, so going up to four ink, we could sing friends, play this, and still hard cast teeth next turn if we if we really wanted to. They don't have a ton on their board. For some reason, last match I thought they were red purple, and I said they could have beat there. They're not even red purple. That's just a big brain fart. So here, I don't want the Robin Hood to really be able to attack into me. They just gain free lore, but I also just need... Oh no, that's not the card. We got misclicks happening all day today. Um, luckily, no punish, kind of, um, with the snake. Another Robin Hood's pretty nasty. Okay, Fishhook lets us trade into their Robin Hood at the cost of our whole turn, so... But then next turn we can play Medusa, kill the next one. So let's just make sure we don't make any misclicks, no crazy misclicks here. We're gonna take this Kuko, drive it all the way around, I didn't care. Okay, we made it. And this does draw them a card, but we need to just get that off the board. None of those cards are too terribly threatening since our Medusa is able to attack them through combat. So once again, we just got to make sure we ink the right card here. Nice and easy. Swing around. All right, we did it. Who would have thought the hardest part of the Lorcana was just inking your cards? Um, I could quest here. And if they attack, it's really not that bad for us. Not questing would give me the option to potentially sing teeth and ambitions on something next turn. And I think that's more valuable than the one third. Ooh, goat is very strong. Yeah, 16, I think, is going to be, unfortunately, too much for us to come back from. I can make them sack one, or I could just attack into one, which is functionally the same thing, so I think we're going to do that.
and save this for the next turn. Ooh, oh, we don't have to do that. So they basically to go to 18, which is a functional 19. So we can't allow them to gain a single war after this turn. And there it is. So we lose this one. We'll go to game three. Right, same thing. We want our low to the ground cards. We have a one and a three. We don't have a two. It's possible we're supposed to ink the friends, but I'm going to keep it. All right, we got a curve. We don't have any teeth and ambitions, but we have a good curve to kind of just stay on top of them. Can ink the mini and play Rafiki. Um, if we have teeth, obviously we play mini, but Rafiki is just a better attack. Okay, ink mini, play Cusco. We can't quest because they can eat with their turn block followers, so we just pass. Smee is just such a such a big body. They probably draw here since we can attack with Cusco. Yep, they do. And here I am going to quest with Cusco. So I really want to keep this. I think we have to ink our friends. It's either ink teeth or ink friends here. But we already have more card draw with Rabbit and with the Maleficent that we're going to play this turn. But we will quest here just because it, uh, Cusco replaces himself and then it puts me in, in teeth range or just in attack range. That would also mean they're not questing for two if they attack us. Double Befuddle is really not bad. We still get the attack here to trade. And then just play Rabbit. Um, I think actually we're going to ink Kuzco because Rafiki has a better body. And next turn on turn five, we might be able to slip Rafiki in alongside our Rabbit. And I think that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to stop. Play this rabbit. Stop the lore game from Pascal here. And we're so far away from this dragon that we can ink it and slip that Rafiki. Really? It's important to think about what you're going to do next turn with this deck because that can influence which card you ink, just like last turn. Okay, so here... It's going to be Sing Friends. Attack. Bounce. Attack. Oh, I'm so bad at math. It's fine, we still have it. Why? Oh, it has resist too. I am a moron. Hmm. 
We still have it. I just missed one lore. I'm really trying hard to lose this game. So we should be at two, um, if I didn't make that mistake. Here, I think we just play Maui. Tack. And just put the pressure on them. I don't want to ink this goat. I actually don't think we need the second Maui. I also don't think we need the fish hook. I'm actually just going to ink the snake. So this gives me, this gets me to eight next turn so I can go plus rabbit or Maui plus fish hook. We have the options. They're basically just trying to race us at this point and that looks incredibly menacing. So here we have an attack. We have an attack and they'll go plus Six. Um, we really need to find something. All right, that's not anything, so we'll just play goat for a lore. We have some attackers for next turn and just hope they're their draws aren't too great at this point, but they get two draws here with the Chernobox followers. That's a pretty good one, but a slower one. Okay, so that's 17. Okay, teeth is pretty strong. We can go attack. Attack. I don't think we can win in two turns, even with these goat bounces, but we're, we'll try. Attack the Robin Hood to cut off the shift line. Bounce to go. Quest, quest, quest. So even if I replay goat here, I can't win next turn. So for that reason, I'm gonna play rabbit and try and find some more answers. Well, that's another shot at some more answers, like teeth is really what I'm thinking. I don't think fish hook is gonna be relevant at all. I mean, neither is Maui. So we could bounce something, but, and since it doesn't affect our clock with go, we can go 16, 17, 18, 19. I'm just, I'm just gonna pass. Yeah, we can only get to 19.
that is great for us. Um, so we'll cash in this Maui. Play the Medusa. Quest up. Fishhook's not relevant anymore. Play goat, and um, they basically need goat, goat bounce. So they need inkable, goat snake to win here. We'll see if they have it. Despite all our misclicks and our misplays, we get that match two and one. On draw. In the blind, we really just want to hit our early game. So we actually don't have a turn two because this is dependent on the one drop. So I'm gonna mulligan really aggressively for a one drop here. And we don't hit and we hit two be prepared, which is not good for us against the popsicle deck. Right now we're looking at no play till four because we can't play either of these on turn two or three. Okay, we do have a play. We'll just uh, play the crab here and pass the turn. We are short on inkables. I don't really want to ink the fish hook, so hopefully we draw an ink next turn and just start pumping out rabbits. This is exactly why I don't want to ink the fish hook because of the McDuck manners. Okay, that's a nice ink. So we had a really slow draw, but they also they don't have um, fishbone quill, so their draw is also very slow. So we might still have a chance, even though we didn't do anything until turn three of the game. If they had Fishbone Quill, well, there's the Fishbone Quill. So we might still be in trouble. We'll see how this plays out. They can give the Tala evasive. I don't really care. I'm just interested in luring anyways and drawing more cards and hitting my ink. Now if they play something like a Tomatoa here that is very bad for us. Okay, Lucky Dime is also very bad for us. It puts a lot of pressure on us. But we're still gonna just keep on luring. Uh, we could play Medusa to pop the Tala. I think that's probably what we'll do. Just uh, draw two cards. The location is nice, but they also have Maui's fish hook. So if they have a Maui, they just have an instant shot, one shot on the location. But we might find a window to play it. Okay, 
Yeah, Song's pretty powerful. That's going to gain them three lore here and six lore next turn. Whoa, Ink Tomatoa. So their hand must be just completely loaded. So we've got seven ink. I think what I want to do is drop the location for sure. Can either play fish hook or just return something back to my hand. Probably want to ink this though, because otherwise we would have to ink. Well, fish hook it honestly isn't going to do much for us at this point in the game, unless they drop McDuck Manor. We do want these for, for maximum lore. We, I think, go down more important than the fish hook here. We'll see. Them going to 10 here is really scary, but having the location down sets us up to at least be prepared if they don't destroy the location. Yep, so they're going to be prepared us, and we gained two lore off that, um, and they didn't activate Lucky Dime, so that's pretty nice. So we're really going to try and go into defense mode with double location goats and see if we can close out this game before they can lucky dime us out. Okay, there. This means they have Tomatoa because they're hovering over the popsicle. They're going to want to crack the popsicle. They don't crack the popsicle first for their free value. Oh, I guess because they want to get the five lore right now. But this means this means this be prepared is looking pretty good for us. Let's see. We can go to sixteen. Yep. We just have to be prepared here. And we're threatening lethal next turn, so we can just ink up and pass. All right, so we had no play till turn three of this game. And a slow start from our opponent as well allowed us to leverage our double castle into a win. So we have a 1-3, so we'll try and find a 2, but I think I'm going to keep castle and friends just because they're good lore pressure, or castle's good lore pressure, friends is good card draw. And we'll put the rest of these cards back. So we have no two ink cost card to play on turn two. And I don't really like playing another one drop on turn two, but we'll see what we draw. We might still do that just to uh, put a lot of pressure on them. Teeth is not valuable in this matchup, so I can go ahead and ink that, and I'm going to play the mini. Because I'm primarily questing, I don't want to play Rafiki because it's 0-2 versus a 1-3. Oh, that's a very nice draw. So we'll ink this um, other mini, and go ahead and return that back. That was a really nice draw for turn 2. We'll see if they have their fishbone quill here on turn 
three of the game. That's very important for them. Okay, they don't. Wrong, wrong fish based item. Looking for the fish bone quill. They got the fish hook. They're playing fish aggro, fish aggro over there. That's pretty good turn four. Keep the gas flowing. I'm guessing that they have Maui here on turn five. But we can't really respect it too much. That's not really what we're wanting to draw. So we could play location. That's kind of our only option here. But if they do have Maui, they get to one shot it with their fish hook. So we'll just have to see. Our other option would be play our fish hook and a Rafiki. Our hand's just kind of awkward. So we're gonna go with the more aggressive line. Okay, they don't have Maui, so this queen's castle gets to survive for one turn. I think we're just gonna draw, continue to draw more cards. I could move characters. I could have moved my characters to the castle instead to potentially draw more cards. But if they destroy the castle, then all of that ink that I invested is going to waste. So this is just developing my board in a, in a safer way. This is looking like a be prepared, maybe a scar. Well, not not be prepared anymore. Or scar. And we're able to knock it down. They can't answer the location and it's just creating too much lore pressure. So we take that match. And that's gonna wrap this one up guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the content, uh, go ahead and like and subscribe. It really helps the channel. Thank you so much. See you next time.